What's going on guys, this is Mark here with Anastasio Kali and Union Martial Arts. I'm finally here with my partner James. We're gonna bring you guys a quick partner drill that you can do, um, or you can even do it to a bag, but we're gonna be looking at techniques from the umbrella block, one of the most basic, simple techniques that you learn in Filipino martial arts. Um, if not umbrella block, it's called a roof block, which is basically done on one side, such as this, or over here. So we're gonna be looking from what we call the inside angle off of a sunrise strike, which is going to be straight down to my head, and we're going to look at different scenarios of how we can work off of that. Because when you do a, any sort of deflection block in terms of umbrella or roof, it's just a transition, right? But in certain ranges, you can turn it into almost a reference point or a transition to a grappling technique of some sort. So it, there's a lot of fine details you have to look at, and hopefully I can show you guys these techniques to help you guys get a better read of how you can use something as simple as your right side umbrella block. So, um, real quick, before we go into the three scenarios I wanted to, we're gonna look at two different ranges. The first range is, let's say we're looking at medium to long range, okay? So, the way we normally describe medium is if our sticks can hit each other, I can touch his hand still. Uh, long range is that our sticks can hit each other, but I can't touch his hand. So, somewhere between those two lines, if you gave me a uh, sunrise strike here, and I did an umbrella block, this would normally go straight through because there's nothing stopping it. I'm just deflecting it. So because it's going through, I got really nothing to work with here because this is going to be all the way down here, and I won't have anything to check, so on and so forth. So realistically, my only approach from there is to counter back with a slash or to get a safety hand up. So very basically, this is umbrella block following the same line down to an angle one for the counter. And again, that's more medium to long range. I want to spend more time in medium short range or close range, which is where that comes and I'm almost intercepting inside. Okay, so I have to meet that strike before it passes 50% of full extension. If he gets past 50% and I try to check that, that's coming straight down and that might hit my shoulder, my head, and this hand would probably be more down here. Not going to be able for me to grab. So. When I see that, I'm going to step in and I'm going to check with my safety hand at the same time. So scenario number one is if I check the hand, which is more likely where you're going to check most of the time, it's just going to be a basic pass off. So as I pass this off, I'm looking to kind of expedite his strike off of my stick, like that. And then I have different methods of striking, of countering. But let's look a little bit more to a grappling side. I come inside here, I check the hand, I'm going to look to grab either his wrist or his stick, whatever I can grab as I'm passing it. So if I grab it by the stick, I can bring my hand around, bring the stick across my body, and I can go into what we call like an elbow crank. And usually from here, if I hit that hard enough, it might cause a disarm, I can hit him in the face, or I can turn this into a takedown. In a very similar setting, if I do that, but I get his hand instead, once I grab this here, I'm gonna go for more of what we call an inverted arm bar, or kind of like a Americana, if you will. So as I'm coming here, I'm going to push against that elbow. This places a lot of pressure onto the shoulder. So as I do this here, I'm looking not to go up and around. I'm looking to bring this up, apply that pressure, and then that's going to drive him down this way. Okay. Depending on my partner's range of motion, that's going to either be bigger or smaller, but I'm not trying to make that full loop around like I did in the crank. I'm just looking to get the arm into that position and then use that pressure to bring them down. Okay, so from this side, if I come over here and I get the stick, I can go around and crank. Not gonna be too much pressure on my shoulder. Okay, if I get more of the hand here, then I'm gonna start the same position. I'm gonna bring my stick, point it up, press it against them, and then start to drive them down. Okay. So that is the first scenario if you were to do a check and then you got to either the stick or the hand. All right, so scenario two, still working with the same range. My partner gave me that sunrise strike. This time, I stretch out my hand, but I'm close enough that I do what we call a soon dot or an eye jab. So that's gonna hit one uh, of his two eyes, maybe both of them, maybe I palm his nose, and I get this little bit of, of a lapse of focus, because now he's not focused on the stick of where it's going. He's focusing on what the heck just happened. I can't see it hurts, okay? so. Once that happens and I hit here, my stick is free to manipulate anywhere I want, really. Now, there's two things that can happen from here. One, 
I hit his head, it kind of rocks back, and there's no response. It's more, it kind of took him so off guard that he, he's in almost defensive mode. So if that happens, there's my clean strikes, right? If I come here, I swing up, and then his head rocks back and his hand goes forward, then I'm gonna grab that hand, and let's say I'm on the outside right now. It could be I'm on the inside, but let's say we're on the outside right now. I'm gonna take that hand, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna end up on the outside of his body, I strike down to transition my stick from on top to underneath, and as I do that, I'm going to insert my stick here, roll it, crank it at the back, and then get him into a submissive position. So from here, I can sweep his base, I can roll him forward, I can sweep his base this way, and then I can take him to the ground. So if we look at that again, I come over here, and that hand comes up, after I hit him in his face, I'm going to grab it, strike inside, Turn my body, look how I take that position, adjust my position, I can walk this back, I can walk this to the side, and then I can continue on with however I want to approach that. Be it grappling, be it striking. Uh, remember, if you guys are watching my videos pretty consistently, there is a drill that I did where we learned how to work our weapon dexterity and be able to keep our stick chambered while keeping my hands free. If I take James to the ground, that'd be a perfect opportunity to plug that in so that my hands are free to work, manipulate the position, put handcuffs, adjust weapons, you name it, and not lose the positioning that I require to use it in case he starts retaliating. So for our last scenario, we're working on that intercepting with our sundogs. We're going for the eye jab, but we're going to be under the assumption that we're on the inside of the arm now. So what that's going to look like is I jam in with my umbrella block here, and as I decide to go forward with my sundog, this hand is going to react, but instead of it being across the face, this is a good habit, we call it the safety hand, it's going to be a little bit more out here. So after I hit here, and this hand comes back here, I'm going to take my stick, wrap it over the head, I'm going to shoot in with my arm. And I want to ride this all the way till his shoulder goes on top of mine. So once I get up here, I'm going to lock in my stick, I'm going to lock it in here, by taking my hooking section, wrapping over my wrist, I'm going to tighten that up, and that's going to be an arm triangle. So we're going to go into a submission, okay? So if I show you that from the other side, I'm over here, I hit, I'm on the inside, I follow through that position, scoop underneath, lock it up, and then here's going to be my arm triangle. Squeezing nice and tight between my jaw and my shoulder, so in between my neck here, sinking my elbows in to my lats, pulling my stick to the back here. And that's going to be the choke, okay? So we have different scenarios from an umbrella block, it's very important to look at those specific scenarios so that you're, you're well equipped. Because if you only look at it one way, you don't look at the reactions. And part of the umbrella block, again, is, is a transition. And depending on what I do with it, whether I augment and I clear, whether I grab the stick or the hand, whether I soon up, the hand placement of a, of a safety hand is supporting hand there, that can severely change the outcome. So. You don't ever want to create a pre-rehearsed scenario um, and expect that it's going to happen. You go through these different sets to be prepared if you end up in that position. Right? So uh, definitely if you guys have a partner, try that out. If you don't have a partner, do your best to visualize it, put yourself in the right position and fine tune where your hand goes to try to create that or emulate that as best as you can. So if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you guys see my new videos. I try to get one of them out at least once every week. And of course, I have four lessons for my premium and elite users on my Anastasio Khalid Online Academy, two for the basic, which is available for free trial. So if you're interested in training with us online, make sure you guys check that out. And until next time, catch you guys then.